How you doing there? I'm Al Baldoni from Baldoni Electric. I'm going to show you today how to find a leak in a Hayward heat exchanger on a Hayward pool heater, model number, um, it's a uh, H350FDN. And since Hayward is so difficult to get in touch with, I figured uh, maybe I can help some of you other folks out there with the same problem I'm having. After I took the heater apart, disconnected it, for my equipment, as you can see, and very simple to remove the uh, heat exchanger. Um, what I did is I just remember to keep track of all your parts and if you're not too good at remembering stuff. What I do, I take photographs of everything as I'm pulling it apart. In case I don't get to it for a few weeks, I can remember how to put it back together. And all my nuts and bolts and screws I have in my nice little miracle roll cup. Okay, so back here in my equipment room, what I did is, uh, you can see I reinstalled the heat exchanger just on some shims here and connected it back into my plumbing. And what I'm going to do momentarily, I'm going to fire up this unit and hopefully it'll show me right where my leaks are. This unit, by the way, is only little less than three years old and unfortunately the warranty is up only one year which I find hard to believe so uh, let's go ahead I'm gonna stop the video a second and uh, fire up the unit and we'll see what happens okay here we are back I have my spa pump running on high speed uh, there's my uh, spa controller over here we have it on high speed and we do have water flowing through our plumbing now. Let's see if we can find out where this leak is. Certainly feel the uh, water flowing through my pipes here. And there we have a uh, See back here in the rear left hand corner we have some water dripping and, and there's our leak. Now what I will need to do is make a better decision here whether I'm going to replace the heat exchanger for $700 or try to repair it possibly by cutting away some uh, heat exchanger fins and brazing the copper which uh, is how I will determine if I will repair it or replace it. So there you have it. That's how to find your leak in your Hayward heat exchanger. Good luck. Okay, I have the heat exchanger back on the ground here on my workbench. Back on makes it easier, by the way, to work on a workbench. Have it back uh, here, and I can see where you can see where I removed some of the supposedly Cooper nickel fins to expose a very small pinhole in my copper tubing or cooper nickel tubing. What I'm going to do is braze a little patch on it. Hopefully that will repair our leak. Before I do that I'm going to reinstall the heat exchanger up to my plumbing and make sure that that is the leak. Once again, I'm reconnected into my plumbing system, and I'm going to look at that left rear corner where I exposed copper, and hopefully my camera will pick that up. Okay, once again, what I did here, I flipped the heat exchanger around to make that 
left rear corner be my front corner make it easier to see my leak and there you have it there is the leak Leaking very good I'm running about 20 psi through it you can see it uh, clearly as day where the uh, copper meets the uh, stainless steel um, it deteriorated into the copper nothing to do with water chemistry it ate from the outside in which is a common problem with these heat exchangers. Okay, so we are ready to braze this. Uh, we are 100% certain that is where our leak is. And uh, so I have my oxy acetylene torch and I'm going to be using a brazing rod that is a uh, copper phos alloy, which is um, my rod of choice, which is um, 80% copper, 15% silver, and 5% phosphorus. Again, my rod of choice for brazing this situation. We will be uh, heating up our metal to uh, about 1500 degrees, and this rod will flow at about 1300 degrees. So this should do a really good job for us. Connected. We have water flowing through our manifold, as you can see. And our repair. It's successful. We have no leaks. So next step will be to put this back together. And uh, hopefully we'll get another few years out of this unit. Okay, now what I did, I took uh, my pressure washer and cleaned up my uh, coil the best I could without doing damage to it, just to remove any of the uh, that green oxidation and discoloration. And next, what I'm going to do inside of my uh, firebox here, as you can see from the leak, it caused some uh, flaking of the uh, insulation material. I'm just going to take my shop vac and clean that up. So give me, you know, you want to be careful not to disturb the size of your material. Just back in this up nice and clean. Drop our heat exchanger back in. Put it back together. It needs to be good to know. Okay, so here we go. We have our, uh, heater back in place here and 
We have our gas line reconnected and our electrical line reconnected. I always make sure your unit is properly grounded and bonded to your pool system to uh, help prevent with any electrolysis. Um, so we're ready to fire this up now. We have power to the unit. We're going to uh, turn it on the spot setting and set it for uh, 90 degrees. pressure at the unit. I can hear the pressure switch is clicking. Our inducer fan motor is running. After it charges, we'll have some gas valve will open and we'll have ignition. And you can see there's no more leaks. The repair is successful. Always remember too to have a bypass valve on your heater that you want to set so not all 100% of your water is flowing through the heater, which will uh, uh, help lengthen the life of your heat exchanger. And we have ignition, and our heater is back up and running. Now we can enjoy a beautiful pool and a nice, cool summer night of heat. Thank you. Hope you got something out of this video. Again, thanks for watching.